Today we're going to take a look at two different video cards. We got the EVGA 760 by Nvidia and then the AMD R9 280 and we're going to take a look at that next. Hey everybody, Jeffrey Powers here. Welcome to the Geek Smack Review where I take a look at products, interview people, five minute Geek Smack and a whole ton more. You can check it out over at Geekazine, Think Magazine, put in a geek. I have a desktop computer that's approaching five years now. Yeah, I said five years. I remember how I never had a machine over 18 months, and now I have three laptops, two tablets that I also use, add to it my desktop that's really not that obsolete uh, as it would have been in 2004. So I upgraded the machine during the five years to keep it working as best that it can. New memory, new hard drive, and of course, the upgrade of a video card. Over the summer, I had the opportunity to try out two different video cards, the EVGA 760 2GB graphics and the ASUS R9 280 3GB graphics card, all to find out which one could extend the life of my desktop for another year or two. First of all, let's take a look at the specs of my computer. It's an ASUS motherboard with AMD Phenom X4 945 processor at 3 gigahertz. The processor itself has done a great job in what I do on the computer, which is mostly create video or Photoshop. There is 12 gigabytes of memory inside, and before this summer I had an EVGA 560 card at 2 gigabytes, which basically took a five minute video I created with lower thirds and transitions like I normally do, about 45 minutes to process. Not bad for this machine, but I knew it could do a little bit better. So when I was asked to compare these two video cards, I was intrigued to see the difference in performance. Let's start with the EVGA 760. This is a two gigabyte card with a 1072 megahertz base clock and 1152 CUDA cores. The card allows for two DVI monitors, one HDMI screen, and a display port connector. It draws about 170 watts of power for high-end gaming or anything require video rendering. Now keep in mind, video processing can, can include anything from creating a video, watching a YouTube, or being part of a Google Hangout. Internet bandwidth and webcam are only small factors to your Skype call or other type of video conference. A good video card can improve the experience on your end. With that said, the EVGA tested well in gaming, around 60 to 90 frames per second when it came to some games at 1600 by 900 resolution. Of course, if you get into higher resolution monitors, the frame rate will go down. I don't have a monitor uh, higher than that resolution, but I have seen some websites with higher resolution monitors show frame rates around 20 to 30 frames per second. As for what I do, that being video, I found that the same five minute video took about 27 minutes to process using the CUDA system. That's a 60% improvement from my old five-year-old computer. Not bad, but I knew it could get better. So when we come back, I'm gonna put the R9 to the task and I'm gonna talk about the problems and the end results for you. The NVIDIA GeForce 762 gigabit video card from EVGA brought an improvement of 60% to my five-year-old computer. Therefore, I was very interested to see how the ASUS R9 283 gigabyte would do. And apparently, it didn't come easy. Uh, first of all, I do have to mention that I've been running Windows on my machine for about five years now. I do incremental backups, and if I ever have a problem, I go back to a point in time, not a fresh install. When I put the R9 280 into the computer, I had nothing but problems. The video started to work properly and then glitches showed up. I really knew what I had to do, um, and that was basically create a fresh start or go into my registry and rip out as much as possible. So the reload it was. I also knew that it might affect the results from my NVIDIA GeForce 760. Therefore, I had to do something different with this test, and I ended up creating two fresh Windows installs, one with the GeForce and one with the AMD R9. This definitely made a difference in testing the cards. It also gave me a fresh install point for all, all my backups, of course. So with that said, let's take a look at the ASUS R9 280 video card. 
The R9 283GB card contains an engine clock of 980 MHz. The card has two DVI outputs, HDMI and Display Port. It also contains Crossfire so you can connect another AMD card to increase the specs. AMD uses OpenCL to improve the graphics. The memory clock and interface gives you a maximum resolution of 2560 by 1600 at 5200 MHz. The benchmarks show that the frame rate a little better than the 760 between 5 and 10 frames per second improvement. Comparing with other benchmark websites, they concurred on my findings. However, I'm not as much about the gaming as I am about the video production and this is where I was impressed. Now before I start, I have to mention one issue you might have when using this card with older versions of Adobe software. I have Creative Suite 5.5 which does not support OpenCL. I had to use Creative Cloud to see the difference in render time, which for some reason Adobe software always seems to render a lot longer than many other rendering softwares. Nonetheless, I usually use Sony Vegas for creating video, which does support OpenCL wholeheartedly. When I processed that same five minute video, I found the render time to actually be 17 minutes. That's 73% better than my old card and 38% better than the EVGA. I also noticed that whereas the other two cards masked, maxed out my Phenom 2 processor, the R9 280 was only tasking it at 70%. That meant that the GPU could handle video so much it didn't have to heavily rely on the CPU to process. It also meant that I could do other tasks while the video was rendering. But the best part is I could keep this desktop running for another year creating video without issue. One other thing I do with my machine is create streaming video via a program called Wirecast. With this NAR9280 card, I have successfully held an interview where I brought in two Skype callers and myself on camera. I can record interviews like for podcasts and instructional videos all on one computer. So in all, we have two cards that do pretty well. The R9 giving a better performance simply by pulling some of the work away from the main processor so it doesn't tax it out. I don't overclock my machines, but some of you out there do, so I checked out how overclocking worked. The AMD made it easy with their GPU tweak software that loads with card drivers. This can push the processor clock up to 1000 MHz, and you can create profiles to switch back and forth from gaming to video production to just surfing the web. So out of the two cards, I get a better performance from the R9 280. If I was in Adobe House and used Premiere Pro 5.5 or 6, the GeForce card would be the better bet, especially since I can hack into the Adobe software for the 760 to utilize it with CUDA. One last thing that if you're thinking of getting either of these cards, you will need a power supply running around 500 to 600 watts. But it also depends on, of course, what you have running inside your desktop computer. So how old is your desktop computer? Are you, you switching it out every 18 months or you got a five-year-old machine like myself? Are you looking to update that machine with new memory or a new video card? Let me know by twittering me over at Geekazine, of course, geekazine at gmail.com. Think magazine, put in a geek, you've got Geekazine. If you got a product that you want me to review, let me know and I will definitely do that. Of course, go over to geekazine.com or youtube.com forward slash geekazine to subscribe and check out all the other videos that uh, we've got over at Geekazine. My name is Jeffrey Powers. Thanks a lot for watching. And until next time, you guys, geek out.